Today we have an 04 Dodge Ram 1500. It's a 4.7 liter uh, V8 and it's running rough. So we're going to scan it and see what codes it's setting. So I'm in the engine control computer. I'm going to go into codes. We've got a P0522 oil pressure sensor low. I just changed the oil. It was down a quart and it was pretty dirty. It also has a tick in the engine, like a lifter tick. Cylinder number four misfire, P0304. So let's see if there's any current misfires. It seems to be running rough. Misfire counters on this are in system tests. Misfire counters, and I believe this is live misfire counters. So I'm gonna start it up and see. Primarily cylinder number four, you can see it counting misfires here. Goes up to like a hundred and starts over again. Well, let's have a listen to it. Well, that's where the fresh oil changed. Definitely got a miss in it. Number four cylinder should be on the right side, second cylinder is like a Chevy, but I'll double check that. So I confirm cylinder number four is the second cylinder on this side, it's number 2468 down the right side and 1357 down the passenger side, same as a small block Chevy. Uh, disconnecting injector number one makes a difference in the way it runs, disconnecting injector number two while it's running makes very little difference. So I'm going to try a relative compression test on this thing, but before we even do that, I'm going to set it up. I'm just going to set up the camera here and record the cadence of the engine in clear flood mode. So I'm going to go in the cab, hold my foot to the floor on the gas pedal, which will put it in clear flood mode, and then crank it. Sounds like it has low compression in number, well, in one of the cylinders. We're going to set up uh, an amp clamp and a graphing multimeter and try this again. So here is the cranking compression event. And I expected to see one missing, but instead I see a one higher. And here is synced on channel 2 with cylinder number 1 spark plug or the ignition coil firing event. So that's 1, 8, 4, three six five seven two one eight four three so it was number two cylinder that's showing the misfire no number four cylinder is showing the misfire one eight four three six five seven two I wonder if that's the companion cylinder and we have a exhaust valve not opening in number four. Let me check that out. So to figure out companion cylinders, you write the first half of the firing order over the top of the second half of the firing order. So the companion cylinder to number four is number seven. In other words, when number four is on a compression event, number seven is on the end of the exhaust stroke. Hmm. So that's inconclusive, but it's definitely indicating that we have likely got a valve train problem. Let's have a look at intake manifold vacuum while it's running. So I got the vacuum gauge keyed into the uh, brake booster fitting and that definitely indicates a valve train problem. Could pull the valve cover off I suppose but I gotta talk this over with the customer. Well, based on the firing order, that's cylinder number two that has the issue. And theoretically, to cause an increase in compression, it would have to be an exhaust valve not opening. But it seemed to be running on cylinder number two. I definitely have it on... Oh, you stupid idiot. I synced it on number two. 
I I had a Ford in my mind when I okay let's let's go back and look six five seven two so this sync pulse is number two cylinder not number one number one's on the driver's side you idiot six five seven two one eight four three so that's synced on number two so that's the end of the firing order and then one eight four three six five seven so that's number seven cylinder let's see if that concurs that does make sense now four and seven are companion cylinders and we got a higher current spike indicating there's a higher current demand or a higher compression if we will and if the number four exhaust valve doesn't open that would likely cause that so it's either a flat cam lobe collapsed valve lifter or a broken valve spring so we're going to pull the valve cover off i talked with the customer and considering this is a plow truck uh well we're going to pull the valve cover off and at least see what we can see well that was fun these fasteners down here the bottom of the valve cover are no longer 10 mil i had to use these extractors to get the nuts bolts off uh, you have to take the oil filler pipe off the front of the engine because the bolt up here goes underneath so let's have a look at what i found here there's number two there's number four and there's number four exhaust rocker arm laying in the bottom of the engine oh my god so it's dropped the valve or has it dropped the valve I can't see you gotta get a light under here no it hasn't mm. it's just the way that end of that valve spring is sticking up that's odd I didn't realize they were that long the springs not broken So the lifter may have collapsed and then the push rod or the rocker follower popped out. Hmm. So from my research, I find that it's fairly common for these roller followers to pop out and possibly because of a collapsed lifter. I wanted to replace at least the lifter, but th that lifter being out of the there shouldn't have been any ticking noise coming from this engine so I'm curious if there's another lifter that's collapsed even though that rocker arm was off it shouldn't have been ticking it was laying down in here and not interfering with any valve train movement so I think I'm gonna pop it back in and reconnect the coils and injectors and fire it up and see if I can isolate the noise nobody has parts for this thing in town here like a week to get parts so I popped that rocker arm back in place and had to bump the starter over to get the cam lobe up pry it in from the bottom snaps over top of the lifter uh, I'm gonna start it up now I've got all the coils and injectors and cam sensor plugged back in and see if I can isolate a tick to any one specific lifter No ticking. So I think we're just going to change that one lifter. So it's running much better. I just threw the valve cover back on. I got to get gaskets and lifters for it. Intake manifold vacuum is steady at about 16 inches of vacuum. So we're going to order some parts up and put it uh, at least put a half a set of lifters in it and one valve cover gasket. 